Hi, my name is Jay Robbins. I'm the broker at Robbins Real Estate Group. Welcome to our video series explaining the Texas Real Estate Commission one to four family residential contract for resale properties. In this video, we will talk about who pays the closing costs. It's a big, big topic of negotiation for every contract. Right here in paragraph 12, the contract discusses who pays which closing costs. The first part of paragraph 12 right here talks about the seller, what closing costs do they always pay, but then you'll notice in paragraph 12A1B, there's a blank, and if the buyer and seller agree, the seller can pay a certain amount of the buyer's closing costs. I'm going to get back to that in a minute. Let's go ahead and skip forward to what the buyer would normally pay in closing costs. You'll see in this bottom part of paragraph 12, it talks about buyer's closing costs. Most of the buyer's closing costs are always associated with the loan or the mortgage. Always the biggest closing cost for the buyer. It can range two, three, sometimes four or five percent of the loan amount. That's a lot of money. Frequently, buyers will ask the sellers to pay some of their closing costs. And that's what we discussed a minute ago, paragraph 12A1B. If the buyer and seller negotiate for the seller to pay some of the buyer's closing costs, that amount goes into 12A1B. I want you to notice the language in 12A1B because this can be a gotcha for the buyer. Notice the language says that the seller shall pay up to the number in that blank. Now, when it says up to, that means that the buyer only gets up to that amount of their closing costs. So as a buyer, this is where you need to be careful and not ask for too many closing costs. I'll give you an example. Let's say a buyer and seller are negotiating on a property and the asking price of that property is $300,000. Now let's say that the seller is willing to let the property go for $290,000. He's willing to negotiate down a little bit. But instead of selling the property for 290, the buyer would prefer to pay full price 300,000 and have the seller pay 10,000 of their closing costs. It nets almost the same exact amount to the seller, but the buyer is going to have a lot more cash at closing. They don't have to pay their closing costs. Here's where it can be a got you. Let's say the buyer only has $6,000 in closing costs with the loan and he doesn't have anything else beyond that to pay for. Well, in this case, if the buyer has gotten the seller to agree to pay up to $10,000 towards the closing costs, but there are only $6,000 of closing costs, the buyer will not see the difference. The $4,000 extra essentially just goes to the seller. So when you're negotiating for closing costs as a buyer, make sure that you pay attention to what your actual closing costs will be. As a seller, make sure you look at this paragraph because the price is on page one and a lot of sellers are just going to look at that price. You have to make sure to look at this paragraph 12A1B to make sure that the buyer is not asking you as the seller to pay some of their closing costs. I hope this helps you understand a little bit more about closing costs and who pays them and what to look out for. In our next video, we're going to go over the paragraph that explains all of the extra forms that might come along with the contract, paragraph 22. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in just a minute.